What is up everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. I am an exercise scientist and one of the lead gait specialists for uh, Run Lab Phoenix. I ran division one track and cross country at the University of Texas. And then in 2019, I was one of the top 50 mile and 100 kilometer runners in the United States. And after about a three year hiatus where I was working in public accounting as a CPA, I have come back to Run Lab and the running industry with a new set of business skills. Um, but after three years of working at a desk, my body is a lot weaker, it is a lot more inefficient. And I'm hoping to sign up for the Black Canyon 100 kilometer. And if I don't get into that, that would be in February of 2025, so about 10 months out. If I don't get into that race, I will look for a, another ultra 50 mile to 100 kilometer race in the spring of 2025. But being 10 months out, knowing that my mechanics have been kind of destroyed over the last three years, I really want to start with analyzing my running mechanics at both eight miles per hour, which was my, which is a 730 per mile pace, which was my 100 kilometer pace uh, back in 2019. And then I'm also going to analyze my mechanics in a separate video at 10 miles per hour, which is my marathon pace, my marathon PR pace that I've run um, multiple times now. And so really, why are mechanics really important before we dive in? Your movement mechanics are the foundation from which everything else stacks upon. So your endurance or your capacity to stack volume in training, and then also power. You're going to be able to stack power on top of that as well. And, and why is that? Well, your, your movement mechanics... It's a mix of two things. One is developing the self-awareness of where your limitations are and then equipping yourself with the tools to troubleshoot so that you can be a lifetime runner. And so your mechanics are just a snapshot in time of all the underlying physiology and biology manifesting itself in your running form. So what does that mean in a little bit more depth? Your movement mechanics are a snapshot of your underlying mobility, strength, power, coordination, motivation, elasticity. All of that is, again, manifests itself in your running form. And as you can see, if we were to actually take a look at this real quick and, and dive in, the over here you can see that the body is it's moving all throughout it's not just a lower body thing my arms are swinging my spine is rotating my pelvis is rotating my legs are moving and so it's a full body movement i have some head movement and so by analyzing your running mechanics we can actually get a good almost like fingerprint of your unique full body movement patterns and this is going to translate not just into linear running but this is going to translate into your everyday health as well so there's a lot of utility in analyzing your running form so let's go ahead and d dive right in so this is me running at eight miles per hour um from the front and from the back so what are we going to go ahead and look at from the front so the first big thing that you can see is what we call a crossover step right here so my legs aren't going down right if I draw this straight line you can see that my left leg is already kind of crossing over in front of my right leg so I want why is that um, problematic well one now my pelvis is twisted up and so then when my right leg also goes forward here now I have to swing my leg around my left leg. So I'm just, I'm getting an abnormal rotation through my pelvis and then also through my spine. And then I really want my leg to land more right here. And I want to have a little bit of space. 
and because my leg isn't landing where it's supposed to, now the forces from the ground are going to enter the system or my skeleton and my muscles, my tendons and joints abnormally as well. I'm going to have abnormal firing patterns all the way through the rest of the gait cycle. As I accept that load, the main thing I'm looking for here is, is there space between my legs? That looks really good. So I went from a narrow stance with at contact to a pretty good stance with here at mid stance um, through load acceptance. I do see some abnormal tibial varus, um, which is right here. That just means my tibias are kind of rotating out. You can see a lot of strain already on the outside of my leg there. And then as we come forward through the right leg, looking pretty good here, not really crossing over as bad, but you can already see on this left side, those mechanics I'm having. Um, you want internal rotation at push off, but I'm kind of getting stuck in that internal rotation. So if we were to kind of watch it from the back, you can see it's a lot more visible what's going on. So my leg isn't staying in that neutral position. So right here, my foot is nice and straight and up and down. We want that same motion from toe off, from the moment I come off the ground, all the way through. But you can see I have what's called a lateral heel whip. So I'm already getting a lot of stress if I bring it back to the front. I'm getting a lot of rotational or torsion for, uh, stress abnormally through my TFL, which is tensor fascia latte, which is a fancy word for my, my hip flexors. And so why is that happening? Well, the system, so there's three points of contact. We have big toe, we have glute, and we have core. One of those three parts, or most likely all three, aren't working together to maintain a nice neutral leg all the way through that push off, right? So that's kind of um, an abnormal twisting motion right there. So let's go ahead and continue on. When I land back on the right side, we can see, let me go ahead and bring it up side by side. So right when I landed on the left leg, we can see that nice space in between the legs, whereas I'm on my right leg, we can start to see that that gap between the legs is starting to shrink. And then also you can see that the, the line from the outside of my hip down, it's not very, my leg's not underneath it. I'm getting a lot of this motion right here, that valgus knee collapse, my knee is collapsing in, whereas on this left side, I actually have pretty decent um, alignment of the leg all the way down, and I'm not having a lot of that valgus knee collapse, right? So you want a little bit of pronation, you want the leg to rotate in to absorb the load. You don't want to be too stiff, but this on the right side is it's too much valgus collapse. It's putting way too much stress on my adductor or my groin region. And so those are just a couple concepts there. Let's go ahead and continue on. Right, so to summarize, from the front, biggest things that I'm seeing, if we kind of look at this right leg again, it is nice and neutral through push off, through swing phase, looking really good. Um, from the right side, just to summarize, have that valgus knee on the right. I have a little bit of crossover on the left. And those are going to be the biggest things from the front. So let's go ahead and go to the back side by side. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'll leave the right side on the right side. We'll take a look at the left on the left. I apologize if that caused any confusion in the last video. So here, what I'm really looking at is this angle here. When all my weight is on that stance leg, are my hips 
staying level. And so you can see that on the right side, that's very, very level. The, the logo on the back of my shirt is staying relatively straight. Whereas when I'm on that left side, the, the pelvis is, is tilting side to side. So I have poor what's called frontal plane stability. So you have sagittal plane is forward and back, frontal plane is side to side, transverse plane is rotational force, and all three planes of motion are acting upon the system, which is your body, at all times. And so that's another little snapshot of what's going on with your form. And so on the left side, what that, what that means is this part of my body, the, the gluteal muscles, aren't doing their job of stabilizing the pelvis when my weight is all on my left leg. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that part of my body is weak. It just means for whatever reason, that muscle isn't doing its job. It could be a weakness issue. It could be a nervous system coordination issue. I could be running with good mechanics, but then it's, it's, um, this is manifesting itself. It's showing itself, revealing itself. That would be more of a weakness. If I have poor mechanics, if I can get my foot in a different position or if I can get my uh, upper body in a different position or my arm carriage or my cadence, right, my foot strike, that may clean this up and that gives us insight into, well, it's more of a nervous system coordination issue or could I be not warmed up, right? So there's a lot of different um, underlying reasons for the things that we see and based off experience and education, we see it, we make a hypothesis, we try to troubleshoot and then go. So it's, it's definitely not a warm up thing because I did an hour of jujitsu right before this so my body was very um, warmed up. So other things from the back, let's go ahead and just continue on. Like we kind of already alluded to, have that lateral heel whip on that left side, on the right side, it's not as bad. There's no lateral heel whip, so you can see as I go through that push off on that right side, right, it's not doing that abnormal twisting motion. You can really, really see it here through the left foot versus the right foot. Everything's nice and neutral. I have nothing uh, twisting abnormally there, at least at push off. And then as we continue through swing, what does it look like? I get a little bit of a medial heel whip on the right side. So now you can see my left foot is nice and neutral, nice and up and down. But now the right foot, I have that heel is starting to point off at an angle. And so there's some, some different whipping motions there. And, and what that's going to be is most likely my hips or my pelvis and my spine as a consequence are abnormally twisted, right? And so that's a good um, insight right here. Because my pelvis and my spine are abnormally twisted and out of alignment, it's manifesting itself in my feet twisting abnormally. And then you can kind of just put your foot on the ground and pretend like you're pushing out a cigarette butt and you can feel the tension up and down the system and you're like, oh yeah, that would cause a lot of strain. And then also it's manifesting itself in the abnormal rotation of the spine. So right on this right side, as that foot is about to go into contact, look at my upper body mechanics and you can kind of see the twisting through my shirt. And then on this left side, as that foot is about to reach initial contact, you can see that there's a different twisting here. So I'm twisting a lot more left to right through the upper body and a lot less right to left. I'm not getting that thoracic mobility through the spine and the pelvis and the spine are coupled, which means they move together in tandem to counter each other. So if I'm having abnormal, don't have that fr uh, degrees of freedom through the pelvis, I'm not gonna have the, freedom, the degrees of freedom through the spine and vice versa. And so, let's see. Next thing we're gonna look at is a little bit of the arm carriage 
So you can see kind of like my looks pretty good actually, and I don't not seeing anything pretty much abnormal. Really, the big takeaways from the back are the lateral heel whip on the left, the hip drop on the left, and then the abnormal um, spinal rotation right to left versus uh, left to right. So let's go ahead and bring up the videos from the side to wrap this thing up. So I'm going to bring the right leg to the right. I'm going to bring the left leg to the left. And let's do this thing. So what we're looking at here from the side first is what we call initial contact. So right when that foot hits the ground, right versus left, you can probably already see with the naked eye, which is super duper cool about running mechanics, is you kind of have an instinctual awareness of for efficient body movement versus inefficient. Like we can look at a race and we can tell right away, oh, that person looks pretty good that person doesn't. So it's baked into us at some instinctual level to see these things. But this is just the finer details. So what I'm looking at here is where is my foot in relation to my knee at contact? So is my foot right underneath my knee? Is my shin as lined up as possible? And so that looks pretty good right there on the left. And then on the right, we're also looking pretty good. So the, the foot placement at contact is looking really good. It's, probably, it's looking a little bit better on the right than it is the left. You can see that when I draw a straight line right here on the right, that my shin is completely behind it. Whereas on the left, my shin is a little bit in front of that straight line. So I could actually bring that left foot a little bit further back at contact and then you can also see this is an interesting um, thing as well that if we look at that forward lean I'm really really tall when I'm on the left but when I'm on the right I'm actually tilted forward a little bit and you can see that as well in the hips my hips are kind of just perpendicular with the ground right here and they actually should be tilted forward a little bit like on this right side right I have a little bit of tilt there Whereas on this left side, I don't really have that tilt going on. And so that's interesting. I'm having a little bit of lean while on the, on the left, but not necessarily on the right. So then we want to go to loading response. And what we're looking at is, okay, how hard does that come down right there? And then as you can see, I've only gone a few frames. And my right swing leg is already almost in line with my left leg. Whereas on this side, that left leg isn't even close to that right leg after a few frames. And so now, like the right leg continues to flex, continues to flex. Whoa, right leg's already by the left leg, which means as soon as that right leg swings by, my right pelvis is going forward. My left pelvis should start to go backwards into extension. And now my leg wants to completely flex. So right here, when that um, opposite leg swing leg is next to the stance leg, this should be maximum flexion through the ankle, through the knee, and through the hip. Right here, that should be maximum flexion throughout stance. And on the left side, you can also see the... Um, this ankle motion right here, this ankle flexion right there, and how much more ankle flexion I have on that right side versus that left side. So when I see this, what it's showing me is I'm really favoring that right side, right? I'm getting a lot more triple flexion, flexion through the ankle, the knee, and the hip on the right side compared to the left side. And now the left side, because it didn't flex as much, now it didn't give as much time for the bigger muscles in the posterior chain or behind my leg, my butt, and my hamstrings. I didn't give it enough time to recruit those muscles for extension. And so if they're not doing the job, 
the, the protagonist or the primary muscles, that means a secondary muscle has to do the job of extension. And the secondary muscles for extension are going to be my low back, and that's going to be my calf. Because I'm not using my glute and my hamstrings on my left side for extension and thus propulsion, I'm using my low back and I'm using my calf and soleus and Achilles um, to push off. And then you can really see here just the difference between the two sides right here. I'm already healing off on the left side already. I'm already um, still super stiff-legged. I'm just now getting my hips over my leg, whereas right here, right, my hip is still over, not even over my leg still. And look how far this right leg is already in swing, whereas right here, my leg is way back behind me in extension when that left leg is, is already in swing. And so this, on the right side, looks a lot more efficient in terms of propulsion versus this right here. I'm not even, I'm not getting any push off on that left side. So pretty much what I'm doing on the left side is I'm just using momentum and I'm using my calf almost like a peg leg to drag it forward stiffly. Whereas on my right leg, I'm really, really getting um, good push off. I'm using the, the proper musculature. And so now what we're gonna take a look at is as that toe comes off the ground, what does everything look like? So I'm gonna go here, looking through extension, getting about 30. And that's also about 30. So that's actually good. I end up getting similar extension on both sides at push-off. So that's good. The pelvis ended up finding that balance at that final phase of push-off. But the thing is, on the right side, I'm using the proper musculature because during the, the whole loading response, of initial contact through loading response mid stance to push off using the glutes and the hamstrings we're on this side i'm using more calf and i'm using more low back to achieve that same range of motion and then i push off through stance phase what are we looking at here at this figure four position do i get a good lift and you can see once again insight into me favoring that right leg versus that left leg because of this heel. You can really see the, um, the heel lift. So if I draw a line through the middle of my knee to the top of my heel, middle of the knee to the top of the heel, I'm pushing off a lot harder with that right side. And so that's why the foot picks up more on the right versus the left. And then we go through another step. We got a nice stance phase, boom, poor mechanics on that left side. And so pretty much when I look at this, my, my left side is very, very weak. Where am I weak at? In the low back and in, in the glute. And so it's weak and then also uncoordinated. And as a result, overusing my, um, my calf and my low back, for load acceptance and for propulsion. I'm favoring the right side as a result, putting more load on there for acceptance and to push myself forward. And the left leg is just going along for the ride. Because I favor the right side so much, I'm getting abnormal tightness through my ankle, through my hip flexor, through my core, through pretty much the entire right side, right? And so my left hip is locked up, my right ankle is locked up, and that shifts the pelvis out of alignment. And then the left side's trying, it's not even activated, but then the, the spine starts to twist this way to left to right to counter the right hip being shifted forward. So what would I do? I'm gonna try to loosen up the right side as much as possible. And I'm gonna try to do different gait mechanics and strengthening for that left side, get the body back in balance, try to put some more load on that left side and because i have thousands and thousands of reps kind of favoring the right side 
over the next 12 to 16 weeks or so, I'm going to start shifting my emphasis to trying to put more load on the left side in addition to strengthening exercises as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, at the faster speeds of 10 miles per hour, we're probably going to see similar gait patterns, but they're just going to be more extreme, right? So once you start gait training, it's like, okay, my body can run with this coordination and this strength and this power at this speed. But once I add stress, so either distance or speed, can I continue to maintain the, that gait pattern under more load? So that's one thing, but then also I'm generating more force. So the amplitudes of my arms, the amplitudes of my legs, the amplitudes of triple flexion are just gonna be greater. So next time, let's do that.